Hello, people. How you doing? We are back once again with another live, this time with the incredible JJ Revlon. Where you at? Let's get them in here. JJ, where you at, boo? Hmm, no user available. Oh, wait. Where are you, friend? How are you guys doing this lovely evening? What time is it where you are? Hi, Georgina. Eight o'clock is seven here. I am trying to find where are they? Request if you are here. Sorry for the delay, friends. Oh, someone called me Charming Lady. I don't think I'm very charming, but that was kind of you. <laughs> oh, sending all the waves back. I hope you guys are keeping well. Are you locked down where you are? is our friend welcome to spain oh you're listening all the way in spain amazing i'm doing good nick oh there we go Here's sorry for my stalling guys i hope you found me entertaining paris france you guys are everywhere i'm loving it lol <laughs> do you know what yeah well, do, you know, do you know do you know what I got an email being like, make sure you're on time. I've been sitting here since eight doing this to refresh to see if the if pack live will now arrive. And it never <laughs> arrived. So I was like, oh, okay. Let me see on the page. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, you've been really sitting here early. Um, I was just oh. talking to the people. Do you know what I mean? I was just, we were having a chit chat. We were having a little catch up. So don't you worry. Ah. Don't you worry. I saw I was like, I was like, for fuck's sake, why do you have to be late? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we here now. We here. How Only are you doing? Only by three minutes. I'm all right, you know. I'm good. Where are you I'm in the good world and right good. now? Uh, right now, I'm just like sitting down in Spain. Uh, yeah, in Barcelona. Um, doing nothing, same <laughs> shit, different day. Was it? There's that been no rules about what I can say and what I can't say. I don't know if I can swear, but. It's happened now, so it's, we've broken the seal, so we might as well. Okay. Go on. okay listen. If you're going to talk to me about, I'm going to swear down because that's me being very authentic. <laughs> Come on, well, BCM on fire! It's why you're here. Uh, uh. So, for people who, you know, who have been living under a rock and are completely disconnected <laughs> with reality and have yeah. no taste. Tell them who you are. Um, firstly, can we get into your beat right now? Just what's up? Okay, and the her. Okay, down to the back, 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 back. Okay. Do you really be different in these lives? We got you big look, back. new life, you <laughs> look, new life. I've been watching this shit. Um, so I am JJ. You are cat. Surfing the people. 
Uh, I'm JJ, uh, JJ Revlon. Uh, I'm the UK father of the House of Revlon, also the father and father of the Kiki House of Tea. I'm a DJ, Vogue, house father. Uh, I scrape a little now. I, I've been watching. My, I'm just man of many hats, really, but mostly people know me for my work in the London Borough scene. Uh, and I, I don't know, my thing to community, what is the thing called? Like, uh, my, I don't know, I've just done, oh, Cat Dad, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like an all round guy. I just kind of say I'm a man of many hats, the different talents. Uh, that exists under my umbrella. Uh, but yeah, mostly people know for the work that I've done in the ballroom community in the UK. Um, and some might know me from DJing as well. So that's yeah. kind of... Wow. You are I'm, all about the, I'm all about the place. You are absolutely killing it though. Because the thing is, I... Gosh, I think I started following you years ago when I kind of like was just interested in voguing. It's really inter interesting because I kind of like Obviously, like, watch, like, Paris is Burning, all that stuff, but my kind of interest mm. in voguing actually came through listening to, like, Jersey Club music. And then uh -huh. looking at, like, voguing videos of people voguing to Jersey Club music. And I was like, oh, my God, like, this is so, like, interesting. These two worlds, all this stuff. And then I kind of, like, just, yeah, I was watching videos. And then I kind of obviously was like, you know, what's popping in the UK? What's happening in the UK? Obviously, yeah. like, stumbled across you, have followed you yeah. for ages. Um, my friend Sizzle, she sings in the in the house gospel choir. You were DJing. Oh, well. sick! So oh. You, you are such an engaging DJ because you are like dancing, giving it. That's everything. so crazy! I and did you're not, not missing a beat. You are not missing a single beat. Honestly, I'm trying. Like, uh, I need more of you. You are so talented. I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> uh, I do tend to I do tend to forget like certain things I've done uh, just because I don't really do and everything I've done is not out of I wanted to be known I wanted the following mm -hmm. I wanted this I didn't want really anything but a happy space so the fact mm. that you like I forgot about the house of Squire situation like because I feel like I see those people so many times we either play at the same gigs or I'm dancing at a gig that they're uh, singing at. Like, it's, it's yeah. just, uh, it's very much like <laughs> all over the place a little bit. <laughs> so I did never, because I always, I feel like I always see someone, you yeah. know? Um, so I just always, I don't know, I'm just like, end up in the same spaces with people. Yeah, but it's just yeah. been, it's been good. You've been it has been good, hasn't it? I think I... last year I lost so much work and like doing, I feel like I've non-stop done talks, like non-stop. There's more coming, <laughs> but I've non-stop we'll done listening. talks. <laughs> I've non-stop done them and they say stuff about me and I'm very much like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> like I really be, I really be out here like, just living day by day, trying uh, to keep on top of myself, really. Making sure uh, I'm just happy basically you are you are joy to follow in all the years i've Thank followed you you have only brought joy to my 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 instagram timeline so all i can do is be grateful for that Thank but you, you know let's let's get into the history let's get into the backstory of it because you know a lot of people will think of voguing and they will think of what's happening in america and they'll think of the yeah. ballroom scene in new york and stuff but there is a there is a british voguing scene so where uh -huh. did that come from and how did you get in involved in it? I swear I should have been more prepared. So <laughs> in, the, in the scene, so the scene was brought to the UK back in 2006 uh, by a guy called Les Child. Um, it might have been before then, but I mean, I'm 28. Mm. So I'm going to talk about yeah. what I know. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask how you are, but you can, how old are you are? But you can just DM it to me if you don't want to say it on camera. Um, because I thought we were like the same age, but sh but we sick, are okay. Oh, okay, sick. Oh, um, well, so... I'm, I'm a bit younger than you, but in my eyes, you've accomplished okay. so much, and I'm like, will I even get one fraction of that by the time I'm 28? Yeah, that's why we're here to talk about it. 
Um, but the history came in like 2006 and they came kind of like a performance style, like people were doing it, it was really like cute and whatever. Then it kind of died down as things do, you know. And then it came back up again throughout like the club culture here. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of died down again. And then right. like, um, shout out Harley. Um, she kind of made balls and was doing more work around the scene. Um, and then again, again, it kind of like died out again. I kind of came in around the time where I wasn't really seeing what I wanted to see as like a boring community. Mm. Not because of the community side, but what the, the, the bulls essentially represent a little bit. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was just kind of, I kind of just ended up going to Paris. Shout out Vinnie Revlon, that's my father, all the way from Paris. Um, when I went to that ball, and actually when I met Vinnie in London, that's kind of when like the pin kind of dropped. And then when I was in that ball and I came back with my Judy, who's now also in my house, but Bam Bam, shout out you as well. A lot of shout outs yes. in this episode. Um, and uh, when we came back from Paris and we couldn't talk for two weeks, that is the, the pin that dropped that said, girl, whatever you've been going to has not been it. We'll never be it. When it came about, I kind of just did what I thought needed to be done. Um, and it kind of just grew from there. Um, that's kind of it in terms of like the ballroom scene. Mm -hmm. uh, the scene's still going, it's very diverse, it's very different. I think each scene needs something that can, that can do something for the lack of community somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's always like a gap in the market kind of idea around it. So, you know, New York history is like heavily black, trans women, X, Y, Z. Um, and in, like, Paris, same. Like, mm -hmm. if you can't afford... I've been saying this. I feel like I should have shares in the Paris Fourth Day. Because I say it all the time. If you can't afford to go to the US, you have to go to Paris. Like, come to London. It will be cute. But mm -hmm. you want to see, like, the closest to New York. And that's saying so it's come from... Someone who's obviously the scene in London still building, like there's so much, it's different, you know, mm. but it has such a New York vibe uh, in Paris. And yeah, I kind of just, it's just, every scene is different. So for what I bring to the table, just for retrospect, is that my mother, as in my, not my boring mum, is my single parent mother who gave mm -hmm. birth to me, <laughs> does the door of my balls, of everything I do. Every I'm event. So she always hugging everybody. She knows all, who, who is from the scene and who's not. She gets it. So for a black mother to come and sit on the door of a ball, say hello, greet you like she is your own. That is kind of what I just want to accomplish. So it kind of is like mixed. Like in the UK, it's very like every, it's like everyone, straight gay, X, Y, Z. But there's still a, a respect factor that needs to happen because at the end of the day, you're in my home. Mm -hmm. Take your shoes mm -hmm. off at the door mm -hmm. kind of vibe. That's what kind of keeps the kind of thing going. Like we can still work in harmony, essentially. Obviously there's shade in ballroom, but I ain't got time for it. But... <laughs> Unless it's like just in the comments and just like uh, your kid, <laughs> but they it's just too. It, I just wanted something that was just like every everything, you know. Mm. I've been privileged in my in my coming up gay, right? I've had the opportunity to be in the black gay spaces, specifically black gay spaces, specifically seeing black gay men who are from Jamaica, fresh yardy accent on the floor doing head top and split. Whereas like most people haven't had that and I get it, but these clouds still exist. There's so many spaces for specifics that my kind of space that I build around ballroom for me and my winner circle is just that we work in harmony and it's kind of like an open dialogue kind of vibe. Mm. Yeah. 
And all of so. all of the spaces you've spoken about are like, you know, they're they're safe spaces and they're safe spaces for a reason because mm. of the persecution and the homophobia and the transphobia that exists in society. So you build these spaces for you to feel comfortable in. And like yeah. I'm sure that is so much of what like ballroom is. Um mm. so you kind of say that voguing is is still something that is political even though like you're saying it's it's such a diverse scene now and so many people are a part of it uh, do, 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 do. I should, uh, no that's a hard question oh. i think it is mm. i think it is the thing is do you know what's so crazy when you ask that question all i can think about is the time uh after the orlando shootings the Monday when I woke up, I was in such a rut that I was, I called people who are like from the community, right? And I was like, hey, we should go to Soho, we should Vogue. Something in me, you know, like a spirit is the same mm. time in your air that you need to do something. Mm. I was like, there was a, there was a, uh, so after I did my job, right, I was teaching my class, mm. I went to Soho and then ended up so, uh, Vogue in the circle and then people started sharing stories about their family who were either in the shooting or part of that kind of uh, from a part of the LGBT community who were like shook mm-hmm. because that's where they came out and you know found themselves and it was like really nice and everyone painted it as like a you know political thing mm-hmm. where for me it was kind of like a nine night essentially like a nine night is like nine nights of uh, yeah. celebrating someone's life till uh, the funeral day, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I, when I, when we used to ask me born being political, people have taken it and been like, you know, you're an activist, you do this. I always go, no, I'm not activist, I'm, a, I'm active. Mm. And I think active is about existing. So I think if you're part of the boring scene and you exist in real world as yourself, I think that is a part of activism. But in terms of like the fight, the fight against yourself, the fight to be you. Yes, boring can be seen in that kind of way. And like against politics, like there's a lot of videos in the US which has been used as like, a, like people voting to sirens of the police, like black trans women voting to sirens of the police. Like all these things have happened, right? So yes, it still has that stance. And also with boring, people who are supposed to be there are there. Yeah. I definitely feel like there needs to be more trans women in Borum in the UK overall, I think. Um, what do you think the values like, are? I think in the reserve is like the whole thing of realness. It's like a category that exists in the Borum scene. It's about blending into society day to day. Some people don't like it because it can, it can get quite shady. Right. Um, so it's kind of that thing of I don't want to be a part of something that kind of judges me, which I completely right. agree with. But the whole point that it started was about survival, less mm-hmm. about judging you, more about surviving. How do you use this this trophy here and apply that to real life? Kind of thing. Because right. um, Borum is still a game. It's fun. It's extracurriculum. You can't really, you can get um, some jobs with it, but you can't get a nine to five with it, you know? Yeah. It's just something that you do as extra. It's like, yeah. a ni- it's nice for you. And for those who've never been or they've never seen it, talk through mm. what a ballroom night would look like. So in a ball, what you'd have, uh, there's a lot that consists. <laughs> in, a, in a ball, what you would have, Jesus, by the end, no hands, no voice, uh, you'll be upset, you'll be sad, you'll be happy, you'll cry, you'll scream, you'll shout, you'll, you know, you'll do, it will be a mixed emotion, you know. Yeah. You, you, you'll never be prepared. Yeah. You'll never be prepared. Like, you just have to go and just see it for yourself. Respect the space, follow the rules. Bob your uncle, you're gonna have a great time. <laughs> you know, you, that's yeah. what it is, you know. You see someone get turned, you're gonna clap and be like, oh my God, yes, oh <laughs> yes. And then you see someone else come out and they get chopped, but you think they got turned, you're like, no, boo. <laughs> Do you know how many people I have to like tell them to be quiet? Because 
when you get chopped, it's not a bad thing. Like, it just means come back next time. It's not a bad mm. thing. But people will boo the judges because <laughs> they're in their feelings. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. It's very yeah. like, you will never know how you're going to feel by the end of it. Because you might be pissed by the end. Because you're like, that you, like, and go up to that person and be like, you should have won. Mm. I don't think that other person should, you should have won with all the neck and the hands. <laughs> That's how, like, like, you just start getting, you just be immersed. So I can't even tell you, like, what exactly it's going to be like, because I'm mm. telling you, every ball I've been to, obviously, well, most have been my own, <laughs> so many in the UK, but every ball I've been to, there's been something different. I felt different yeah. about all of them. I felt different about the endings or some battles or stuff, even as a promoter, because I'm, I have to be impartial. I just never know what my feelings are going to be by the end. I think it gets, yeah. takes me like a week and a half, you know, a week yeah. after, a week and a half after, I'm like, oh shit, bitch, you did that. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Or you'd be like, you message the person and be like, oh my God, your ball was so bad. It's, you never know. It takes time. It's so good to just kind of get that, those appreciative messages from people who have enjoyed the spaces that you've created for them. Yeah. But very hard to be like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I'm very much you like... You can yourself up. You deserve it. No shame. You are talking about self-expression and self <laughs> You know? But uh, you, spoke about, can... you spoke about yeah, having, um, being quite privileged growing up to have access to spaces where there were other young gay Black people just mm. expressing and enjoying themselves. How would you kind of say you, A, found those spaces and B, became confident in your own expression of gender? Uh, with, so the way I went to the club was not the legal way. Oh, all right. I was, um, watch, you know, I was like, you know, I waited till the, the I went before the time the security came. I will make friends with the promoter. <laughs> I will make friends with the doorstop. <laughs> I will make friends with whoever will get me up in the gig. <laughs> you know? Friends so, in high places. Friends in high places. You always got to be friends with the promoters and the, you know, the people, well, no, not the people that can get you places, but with promoters, 100%, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I came up. I was like 15, 16 maybe. And then I... I didn't remember. Oh, there was like a website. Oh, what was that website called for the gays? The black, the black gays, black gay chat. BGC. And you just start meeting people, being like, just talking, have a nice time. Then they go, oh, I'm going to this club, and you be like, mm. where's that? And then you start seeing these messages like, I'm going to the club. You going to the club? Oh, I'm going to the club. Oh, the club. And the club fly is there. And you're like, oh, I need to go to the club. How do I get on the list? <laughs> But I just had, had like a, uh, a friend at the time who took me there. I was very gassed and shocked, you know. And then the promoter kind of, I think, I was like very much like out there. I was in that space in it that was like mine. I could brack out and there not be a problem. I don't think it's never been a problem for me growing up in school. And I went to school in Peckham. I went to uh, Academy at Peckham that used to be called Warwick Park. Um, and I used to brack out there also. There was always a breakout <laughs> somewhere that had to be happening. Um, and I kind of just found this space. I think the first thing you have to do is find a circle of friends that are like you, number one. Mm. What was good is that I had my cousin who danced, I had a friend who danced. I, everyone that was around me was like, kind of like dancers. So going to this club yeah. wasn't so much about sexuality, more about wanting to dance and able to get in. Right. Kind of thing. Um, but yeah, in the back yeah. of your mind, you're like, oh, I have a girlfriend, but I like this boy. So that was yeah. where that drama was happening. Um, and you kind of go in this space where you're like, what do I do? <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> and you just have to, it was for me just getting in there with my friends and dancing the music and just being in that space, you know. I think... Space, there's so many spaces that are specifically for people. If you can, if you have access to a computer, phone, even if the phone is like, as long as the phone has internet, 
and they're able to be on the web. Mm. You can find a space for you. I don't think it's the same like back in the day. I think club spaces for people who are under the age of 18 or even 21, in my opinion, is very much a questionable space that you shouldn't really be in until you're like 25. Um, because it's where you're really finding out about yourself. Right. And it's like so many temptations. At least I would not be, I would get into the club, but I wouldn't be brazen to ask for alcohol at the bar. Right. Yeah, I always drank Lucasade. I always, I always had a soft drink. Yeah. So kind of this thing of like, like now that you have, you know, 18 can drink and stuff, I think bars and stuff are quite questionable. I think you have to find common interest with someone to create friendships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it can't, I, I think if you're meeting someone in the club, I don't know, it could. You could be friends, you could be married in 10 years or whatever the case may be. You never know what, it could, what could happen. But I definitely think it's more about finding specific spaces for yourself. Because right. before the club, I had dance. I always had a dance club that I went to. These are the people I danced with. We all knew we were gay, but we never said anything. I mean, it was just people you judge with because you naturally can be mm. feminine around somebody else. Mm. And have all but, those people that now grown into their identities as well? And do you mm, kind of like... No, some aren't, to tell you the truth. I know one that isn't. Uh, we don't talk anymore. Um, but some are. Some mm. are out here. Mm. You know, Did you ever come out here? Like, just in accepting and being yourself, or were you always quite like self assured and confident? Be myself, yes. Like, I was always, I think I was always myself. I don't think I went, I went, if I went through phases, I went through them because it was like a dance industry phase. Yeah. Um, I was never like an emo or. I never went down this kind of route. Mm -hmm. um, but because I, I was also surrounded with a lot of black people. I think that happens. In, mm -hmm. my, in my school, it's kind of like, if you're white, you're kind of outcast. Like, you can, yeah. I can name I them exactly the on my hand. <laughs> like, you know? The one white the girl in my school was called White Girl. That's literally what they called her. That's her nickname. <laughs> Bless her. She is like my best friend. Though. But it's just so funny when I'm like, do you remember what they used to call you at school? She was like, yeah, yeah what? My girl. <laughs> That's the thing. It beats so, like that. <laughs> it does. But um, I think myself, it was always kind of accepted like, oh, bless my mother. She's so lovely. Shout out to you. But oh, she mom. never really, she never, like, unless she told her like, Oh, this person's gay, or or that person said them from them from their mouth. Oh, you know, I'm gay, or I'm whatever the case may be. You know, she would never, ever, she would never be like that person's gay. Why are you hang around with them? Mm. She would never say. She would just keep her mouth closed. She would never say anything. And I was hanging around with the gays or boys, like, like we were like <laughs> together, like. Mad young, uh, I want to say the word, but I don't know if it would be if it might not be work for this channel. But we were just like gays in the streets, like love dance and love boys, you know. Uh, but she never really clocked that. Like, I would tell her, like, what to wear. I did her hair a couple of times, nails, all this stuff. And I just could mm. was able to be me and at her family parties, breaking out, whining, all these things, like nothing, never been a thing. Um, so my sexuality, so, uh, my sexuality made me not so much, not hardcore, but maybe like in a, when I went to uni, oh, so funny, actually. People, well, if anyone from my uni at the time, uh, what is this? It's going to be hilarious. But <laughs> when I went to my first, like, introduction day, um, they, <laughs> I went in, like, sheepskin jacket, thigh high, knee high arcs rolled over okay real okay <laughs> I, that's what i spent my ema money on <laughs> okay <laughs> looking good okay Woo, I, you're, walking, I you're walking to uni but at least you look good okay <laughs> taking the bus in my like ripped jeans with like plain and oh i was like giving very much like i don't know i don't know what i was giving but it was giving I was very, very wearing my uh, sexuality on the outside. However, internalizing a little bit. Because we're talking back in, I'm 28 now, when I go to uni, 18, 19, maybe? 
So mm. like a strong like how many years is that? Eight eight years ago, seven years ago, something like this. Mm. Um, when the dance industry was still kind of like uh, homophobic, right at that time. So mm. it was kind of when I went into that school, I was kind of like, well, I need to like sell an idea essentially. Yeah. So people were actually like, oh, are you gay? I'd be like, no, I have a girlfriend. Um, um, I might be bi, but you know, not really. Kind of like, <laughs> boo you. Like, let me just, bye, nice to meet not you. That. Literally, literally. I just scarf and everything. But um, I was giving fame dunk teacher. That's what I was giving. Um, Kind of ended up like breaking up with the girlfriend at the time, and then I just was like, "Man, <laughs> like it just like it literally, literally, my shit happens like this." <laughs> like the point where the boring like click with me, and the community clicked with me. Like not the people, but like I'm not talking about the people, but the whole culture is mm. the same way. Where it was like, "What are you doing?" And even my friends will joke about it now. Do you remember when you came to the first year? Man? And you say you are bi, ah, I knew you were gay, you know? Um, but it's something that I've always had issues with, like, boys who call me gay. I try different things, like, paint my hair pink and stuff like this. Like, I always kind of express myself on the outside. Um, but it was always, like, some dickhead trying to say something. And then I start swinging, and then I nearly get excluded. For what? Why you open your mouth then in the first place? Oh, you were... Uh... You were pulling yeah, up. Completely. Where I basically came out of like, you know, oh, this is now putting myself. Obviously, I did not, to disclaim, I did not use my taekwondo to defend myself, okay? Even though I did have a license, because I know that can be GBH. However, <laughs> girls will try me in secondary school. And you, I don't I didn't know what school you went to, but it comes across as fight or flight, mm -hmm. period. Like, mm -hmm. someone says something about you, you say your mother. You know, it was very much that. Unless you're quick lips, if you if you got quick lips or you know had some sort of strength behind you, people will run you over in school. Mm. And my school was like, yeah, like it was for me. It was a good school. I loved it. I didn't think I would, I would never change anything in my school years or whatever the case may be. Mm. But it was fight or flight, no shade. It was like gang warfare. It was everything, you know. It taught me a lot. It taught me to keep mm. my head screwed up. It taught me to be friends with a lot of people. It taught me a lot of things. But kind of, yeah, maybe like a little bit in that term where I was like in uni, maybe I was trying to reinvent myself or some shit, some dumb shit like that. And be like, you know, I'm bi or I like any of these girls, which I didn't. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't like I them. don't. <laughs> I don't. I can live for your makeup. You got body, you work out, all these things. I'll live for you. Don't mean I won't. <laughs> Same like the men too, to be honest. Like, mm. they really be bugging. But, you know. <laughs> I was, was going to say, let's kind of, like, I, I want to know your thoughts on just representation for mm. queer people of colour in, in the media, um, mm. be it, like, campaigns or even TV or even books, like, what what are your feelings about it? Do you feel like there is enough representation there? And do you feel like the representation that, representation that does exist does justice to the community? Where is it lacking and what needs to be done? Justice, is it, what is seen now, is it doing justice to the community? No. That's the first one out of the way. Um, because when we're talking about being seen, we're not talking about being seen by one person. Mm. You are there, pretty face, looking hella cute. But there might be someone that don't do that, completely opposite to you. Mm. And we need to see all of us, not just half, mm. you know? I think a lot of times we only see half. We don't see all. Also, on top of that, we are fighting for crime. Us, like, we, us two could be in... Um, could be in the same, like, I don't know, roster for something. And they will be like, there's one set of money, basically. They never say that. But they try to set people against each other. And then we yeah. end up being like, 
They were like, why are you fighting for 200 pounds? <laughs> no, that's some bullshit. That's the thing. So when we talk about representation, the people who are already up there, right, mm -hmm. are getting paid. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. They have agencies or they might just be good at business because shout out to them because there are mm -hmm. bitches out there that be really crafting <laughs> and getting them coins. But you have to have a, a universal representation. I always question yeah. sometimes when I'm on like, asked to do stuff like this, you know? Because I'm like, there is somebody else with a bigger platform from than me. I'm at the little blue tick, shout out Lee Gray, because that was because of her. But most people don't want to talk to people like me. Maybe I'm too outspoken. Also, I don't do sugar water. I can't mm -hmm. say, I have to say it how it is. I don't think there's enough representation for us at all in any industry of any form. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we also have to try and put our hands out and bring others with us a little bit, you know. Right. Because once we get to a certain platform, we have a certain type of, certain amount of following. Well, sometimes people have followers and, no, and the followers ain't even listening. But sometimes you do, if you have followers that do listen and do engage with you, you should start talking about other people, start being more about your friends, what your friends doing and stuff like this. I think it's very mm -hmm. important that we kind of, just like if we were talking about it on the kitchen table, we do it on the outskirts. We just talk about these things. And also, you know, I should feel comfortable going out and asking someone what they got paid for something. So if right. someone else came along, you know, and I hate contracts. Like, I will tell you the facts. I hate them. I don't like <laughs> signing them. And if I can make up a boogaloo lame, I will make it up if I can. Because I do not like them. Because you're trying to silence me and I'm not having it. So mm. if you if if you got a gig for Parada, right, and they said to me, oh, because you know that's what they do. They very much like, oh, we have something. She's gonna be on this. Da, 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 da. And then I text you, trying to like, bitch, are you doing this? <laughs> and you be like, no. Who said that? Let me get my agent. <laughs> Who said that? You know, it, it, it give, Who said that? It gives very that. That's the thing. So for yeah. me, I should feel comfortable to ask you what you got paid, and you should be comfortable talking to me about it, but we don't. We're yeah. very much like, you know, we all try to get 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 where we need to get to. Mm. But sometimes when people ask you for assistance a little bit, sometimes you have to back them. I've been in positions where I've been paid more than somebody and they have asked me, hey, JJ, how much have you been paid? And I said, girl, it was this. What did you get? Because it seemed like mm. you were paid under and they were paid like three times under what I was supposed to do for a big brand. So we then had to collide and be like, bitch, whoop, whoop, whoop at the door. Y'all need to give us our money. Because you just paid this person less than me. And the argument is, oh, well, mm -hmm. he asked. <laughs> oh, JJ asked. So we came to what he wanted. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Like, if you've got that coin just sitting there in the corner shop, like, why the fuck you don't exactly. pay this just person? It. What they should... it doesn't make sense. So there's always this thing that we're always going to go through. If we don't speak about what we're getting paid in a very honest way, it will not happen. If we don't, like, try mm. and assist each other, it's not going to happen. We have too much ego mm. sometimes. So, again, it's not going to happen. Uh, we have to be very comfortable talking about money. I think it's very much like you never ask someone what they got paid. You never ask someone. This comes with self-worth. Mm. You know what I mean? This is this is my epitome of self-worth. Like, I will fully talk about money. I don't care. Yeah. You know? yeah. I ain't got all the money in the world, right? I got enough to keep my head over water. However, if someone's going to ask me what they should put as their rate, I'm going to tell them the truth. Exactly. Because because time costs money, and so does uh, your brain and talking and stuff like this. You do you have to get paid for these things. Yeah. You know. Are there any and, are there any kind of reasons why you may or may not work with certain brands? Like, are there levels of like diversity that you expect, or are there sort of values you expect them to have? 
um, that influential decision to work with brands that, and, and that's even beyond the money uh, yes uh, in the same breath you can offer me all the money in the world and I'll say no mm. because if I'm not happy I'm not doing it mm. <laughs> and if I'm not happy I'll give pushback trust me mm -hmm. I've lost when I tell you I've lost gig because About I've been it. like I'm not doing that no I don't think I need to do that mm. thank you so much oh well hopefully we can work next time okay that's why I posted RIP to all those conversations that you had about your fee. But one thing I do look, I do, I do kind of look at, I think I sniff bullshit very far from very mm. far away. Mm. So I think I have a little bit of the ability to be like, something is unclear. Mm. And when something is unclear, you start pressing the right button. And I think values for brands sometimes go, no, let me say it with my chair. Brands have values that they do not follow. <laughs> okay they will say one thing and then manipulate it so it makes sense to everyone they make the sugar water and then they feed it to everybody and then we all drink and some of us go hold the fuck up this don't taste right that's what happens and the thing is i do i prod i prod i prod i prod like i'm the worst to book and i will tell you the truth even on this being here today <laughs> Same thing, I was very much like sitting and waiting for something bad to happen, sitting and waiting to say, Well, nothing ain't happened, but nothing bad that happened yet. Mm. <laughs> that ain't happened. So, you know, what, what happens? Like, you you go in for the conversation, something comes out after that you was not on, like, that was not clear in the beginning, and now it's something that is here after that I can't deal right. with. Um, I'll pull out of anything. I think if it's not something I agree with, then I'll pull out. Um, I don't, like, if you're saying some transphobic shit, again, pull out. Uh, if you say some transphobic movie. shit down the line, <laughs> pull my shit. <laughs> you know? Start GP, GDPRing on everybody. You know, get rid of my information. You know, I, it, 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 it hasn't been like that so far, but I have gone in on, like, a couple papers and magazines and stuff like this for, like, mm. uh, wrong write-ups and stuff like this. Um, yeah, I kind of do look at that. I don't look at quotas. Maybe that's something I should do in the future and be like, hey, how many black people work in the establishment? Mm. Sometimes I never ask that question. I think it's good. Like, I think it's good to interrogate the companies that you are going to yeah. lend your voice to because if they want yeah. you they want you for a reason right they're yeah. like we like what you have to say or we like mm -hmm. what you bring to the table and it's like well if you like me then we need to figure out if it's the other way around if you respect yeah. people that look like me and you're not just using me to yeah. project an idea of diversity or of, you yeah. know like inclusivity but well, are you actually practicing that but then this comes back to your previous question of like is there enough representation of people of color it with brands and the answer again still is no if mm. you have to ask you know the answer mm. sometimes i feel like that if i have to ask you how many if i if there's a question in my head that says they don't work with black people this is just a stun i know it's a stun <laughs> let me ask them how many black people they have in their quota and you know, I might not even like the, I'm, not, I'm not gonna like the answer, but I knew if I had to question it or something that was questioning me in the beginning, I, you know, I, I know my answer. I can't, yeah. I'm now looking for a reason to do it. And if right. somebody in my soul says, don't do it, trust your gut, exactly. If there's something that says, trust your gut, you, you, you have to listen. I've been by bit in my anus. <laughs> for not listening to my gut not so made it in the anus so many times because that's where it hurts All that's right. where it hurts because i'm like oh like i'm so annoyed <laughs> with myself like i should have listened in the beginning you know um yeah. but this is like for instance like i say no to tv always like mm. i would even have the conversation and just not reply mm. sometimes. What because, is it about TV? 
Oh, just everything. You tell me values. <laughs> Again, we come back to her. They say they have all these values when they tell these stories. The story that I'm so tired of, which hopefully 132k people you listen to, is that ballroom doesn't always need to be told in a story. Mm. Does not mean I hate Pose, because I know some of y'all are going to try it. <laughs> pose is amazing, and I actually identify with Blanca quite a lot. She's a nail tech, mm. and so am I. Okay. On top of that, but, but that's one show that I can give a pass to. Paris is burning, not a pass. Born doesn't need this story to be told. We are a community, we're doing what we're doing. TV mm. all the time comes to me and say, we uh, want to make this new thing about ballroom. And then when they pull up reference points, they talk about Paris is burning. This is not new. It mm. is this. And also, Paris is burning. She got sued. Like Madonna. So let's not try to rewrite the same thing again. Mm. Born, also, yes, people do live with homelessness who could exist in the ballroom scene. Do I know who they are? No. Because do I are? No. But make sure everybody knows if you need anything from me or you need any help from me, you can holler. I work with Stonewall Housing, right? I work with them very closely. They've been a guardian angel for me once before, which I didn't ne never knew about until like now I work, work now I'm on the inside. Mm. And I had the connect. My mom works in housing. She's been working in housing 20 certain years. I have the, the connect, okay? She can help me, she has advice. So they always think like everyone lives, you know, in homelessness or everyone lives with me. People only live with me when they travel over. So yeah. these storylines don't need to be told. Stop right. telling the same storyline about everything. <laughs> I am tired. I don't want to hear it anymore. There's no new documentary that someone can make. <laughs> Let's make a documentary about the positivity of everybody. People yes. working in maybe, oh, I don't know about bank, but yes, use it as a reference. Working in bank and still coming to the ball, cutting up and doing their thing. Let's do a documentary mm -hmm. that only shows grace, positivity, respect, self-worth, self-care. <laughs> like, I let's show it. that. They don't it's want to. So this, I say no all the time because they lie, lie. They lie so lie, hard. Lie, 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 when they literally switch positions and then another person lying from a different angle. They lie all the time. <laughs> So that is what irritates me that anytime something comes to my email, it's also my friend that has to speak to me and say, JJ, listen, listen to them or listen out. Just see what they have or what mm. they want to do. Mm. And it's just always, it always, it always turns to a whole different thing. Some of we didn't agree. It's loads of stuff, you know. Same like Paris is Burning. It's the way Paris is Burning was made. Mm. Uh, you, I don't know if you know, but she's like a white woman who made a documentary who's the first to be put into the Black archives in the US for this documentary that was sold to somebody else. And no one, it, no one got paid who was in it. And actually, when you look at the documentary, it shows Black people as thieves and white people as survivors. This is problematic. Mm. Where's the silver lining? Where is, where is the same narrative? It's very weird. Mm. So for me, like, I'm always, I'm against it, even with TV shows. I didn't watch Pose to tell the truth till last year right, end of last year, um, I struggle to watch anything around the culture because I just don't think, unless it comes from us, don't, don't try to do it, you know? We have mm. camera teams, mm. we have people who work in the industry, we have everything that we need. We do not need any more people to be telling our narrative out of your mouth, mm. <laughs> you know? It's something That's about, like, like just the, the need for it to constantly to revolve around trauma. It's like I'm so, black I'm stories, queer, queer, queer stories from people of colour, it always has to revolve around trauma. And that's why I love yeah. you talking about positivity and being able to just embrace and live and be happy and show the joy. Because we're not all yeah. sitting around crying all the time, miserable. Like, exactly. Like, you know? And, we, and no, no shame, like, we will do it once or twice. Maybe 70 or more times, maybe 660 days out of the 665 days a year. Okay? 665 days a year? <laughs> what are you living in? Huh? <laughs> I will cry every day for a year 
maybe just not the last five. That's mm. my business. And this is what me and my friend would talk about, about making something, well, I don't do anything with film or anything, but making something that talks about positivity with our communities mm. and less about this like traumatic experience that everyone's going through. Don't get me wrong, the stories need to be told. They resonate with other mm. people and that's how people connect. It's a serious thing at the end of the day. But also show people that there is hope at the end of the tunnel because it's crazy to me. Ooh, it's crazy to me. I haven't seen my mum in such a long time to so talk about it. It's like, ah, the tears. Oh. So it's crazy to me when people see my mum at the door and hug her and, you know, she's loving. Do you know how many times she, she can't take compliments? But people will come up from all over the world to come to my ball. And when those people are living with me, my mum cooks mm -hmm. and everything. And do you know how many oh. times they go like, I cannot, they're like, I cannot believe like you as a rural mum will be here in this ball with all these like gay people and LGBT people and da 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 da. I'd be cool. And she's like, yeah, I'm just fine. Yeah, I'm just cool. Yeah, that's what I'm like. like, yeah, oh, oh. she's very good. Mm. And it's just crazy to me that, like, people come to my ball and experience that. And that's... So when it comes to, like, all these other things that can, like, build a community in, like, a way of commercialism or anything like this, I'm such... I'm so bad. I can't. I can't. Because mm. that's all people call you and ask, like, did your mum throw you out? Most, most questions I get, like, I used to get in, like, articles and stuff was, like, how is it being like LGBT black and like with your parents, da, da, da. I just say take the question now because I don't have this narrative. Like I don't, mm -mm. I don't. Yeah. It might have been dramatic for 24 hours, but it wasn't dramatic after that. And now she's right by my side. Exactly. All, all the damn time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just told a story that it's positive. I just want positivity. Yeah. I just want positivity. Cause you could you imagine if all you saw was like, Black people living, no problem. <laughs> Just black girls rocking natural hair, no documentaries about how product is bad for your hair, like mm. no image around like having straight hair in the workplace, mm. seeing kids with dreads, like how, like, can you imagine? Just wait, just wait. If you saw that, I think it will bring a little bit more positivity, not all. Because mm. Karen and Kevin are crazy, but listen, Kevin, talk about Karen it. and Karenette, I don't know, trying to find who knows, who knows, all of those people, they do exist, right? But can you imagine yeah. seeing that? That's why I just want to see. It. So until you then, know, I just have to refuse. For people watching this and you know looking up to you and seeing the amazing work you do and how confident you are and how accomplished you are and how much you've mm. built. What advice would you give to the next generation of young queer people who want to get out there and want to build communities like you've built communities and continue the work that you're doing? Uh, persistence is one of them. Even when you want to give up, you have to think about the people that you're giving up <laughs> on. Uh, I think if you're trying to push forward in your own career, the showing of yourself. Self-worth is a very important thing. I know I keep saying it, but it's, it's the truth. Um, don't try to mark yourself down because you think you have the least experience. Um, mm -hmm. Just put yourself on the same level as everybody else, really. But main thing is always be willing to learn. Like, I feel like I can still, I can, I have so much to learn. I always feel like I have so much to learn. And I learn from other people. So like, I teach bowling classes online because obviously coronavirus and stuff like this. But Ooh. I learned so much from my, from my students, from the people who do my class. I learned so much from individuals that I think that's, that's what keeps me kind of going. Like always learning new information, never thinking you're at your end because you're not. It's mm. continuous. When you're at your end, it's giving retirement. It's giving too much money in the bank. It's giving not even too much money, but you're in your, you know, humble abode. You don't have yeah. any, like, 
you know, when you're at a point where you can, where your work can, you know, kind of work for itself or others picking it up and you can still, you just have to be there to catch whatever the fucking thing mm. that is falling from the fucking sky. <laughs> and that's everything. That's emotion. Because some days, like, I, I used to burn myself out so much and I would just be yeah. crying. Uh-huh. You know? So when I posted that on Monday about burnout on my mm-hmm. Instagram, I was like, I need to not do anything today because I was burnt mm-hmm. out. All that things I was reading, I was like, oh, it applies to you, bitch. Go back to bed. So <laughs> I did. I went back to bed. I didn't answer the emails. Went back to bed. People, you so have to do. that's what you have to do. Persevere, always willing to learn. I think those are two things. Understanding your self-worth, Mm. and always having positive people around you but learn from everything never count anything as a mistake I was I never count anything as a mistake I always say it's a le- it was a learning curve it was, it a, was a lesson curve. yes and you know if people are not bringing you joy they're being negative in your circle always around drama mm. um, lock them off I don't have conversations with people who I do not like I very much will lock you off. Mm. I'm not about the mute button. I'm about the block button. So if you need to, <laughs> if you need to, do what you need to do. You know? Yeah. You, just, you have to persevere on your own journey and not look at other people. It's so easy to be like, oh, so-and-so is doing this gig. How come I wasn't asked? So-and-so was doing this. How come I wasn't asked? It's not your time. Mm. Sit your ass down and marinate. It's not your time. That's it. You know, that's, that's what you have to do. It's all these mixture of things, you know. Mm. It's not just one thing. It's everything. And, you, and the main thing it is knowing self-worth. Knowing yourself is very important. I judged for six years. That helped so much. I felt like I grew as a person. People mm. see this confident exterior. <laughs> I sat on the outside. But these dreads help so much. So you have to just go on all these different journeys and it's never one road. It's always multiple. I was yes. first, I come from uh, sing, all, the, all the things. Black, gay, single parent, don't know my dad. Uh, what else is it? Dyslexic, but only found out in uni. So I spent most of my primary school and secondary school just confused. Mm. And going to uni that I hated that did not inspire creativity nor uh, understanding of self-worth and betrayal. Mm. <laughs> You've been through it. Lie to, you know, someone less, less in their bag so they can get a job over me. There's everything, like all these things, all these things exist. And you have to go through all of these things for you to grow as a person, then you got into your life where you start being an adult and you start adulting, you know? Um, savings is really important also. And I didn't understand this till I was 26. Mm. And I'm 28. <laughs> you know? You have to go through these experiences. I dated someone who was like very money orientated like mindset yeah. around not needing things and I was very much oh I have a hundred pounds let me spend all of it on uh food going out you know it's very yeah. much that like university where you get your ground Ooh, child you rich I, you know, I, went, I went to Harrods the first day <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> but anything that you do you have to live within joy you have to love what you do and if you don't love it take a break mm-hmm. there's no problem with that um and just, and, yeah, that's it, really. Yeah. Like, all these things collide into one. And yeah. you just have to go through it and not, and just, you know, pick yourself back up. Or and any advice, like, hit me up. Like, no shade. Like, people want to talk about what they should get paid and stuff like this. Hit me hit up because up. I'll, be, I'll be there to catch well, the that, DM. That I might take a long time. Perfectly. Perfectly. <laughs> okay. You know, because oh, it's... It's eight o'clock now. Whoa, we've been, we've been oh really getting God. into it. So I will not keep you any longer. Enjoy your evening in Barcelona. Um, Thank you. But where can the girls find you? What are you doing? What should we be looking out for? Uh, Let us know. 
Right, first things first, because my friend will, my best friend will kill me, but well, the boys will kill me if I don't say it. But I'm on a podcast. Uh, it's called Wolves in the City. That's W O L V E S. We are back for season three. We're gone away for a year, but we're back with a jump. Or we back, baby. You can you can find me on Instagram, obviously at J A Y J A Y R E V L O N on everything. Um, uh, what else am I doing? Oh, I do classes through Patreon, which are. Uh, fifteen pounds a month. It's like three pounds seventy six a week for classes. They're twice a week, uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. So come through, come through, come through, come through, come through. And then live classes. There's a hell of a lot of content. Uh, I've been doing it for about eight months or something like this now. Um, and yeah, I'm just about like I'm in these streets, just existing in life, and that's, that's what that's it. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. I think I've been sleeping, but let's say smashing it. <laughs> you have been doing well. You have been doing the Lord's work, honestly. We are so grateful for you. You are amazing, Thank you. honestly. And you've been dropping gems upon gems, and stories, and tea, and just making us laugh. Like okay, we honestly it. just love you. So Sometimes thank you when so I, much. When I go off, I'm very much like. Does that make sense in the end? And then I listen back and go, oh, Pete, you really said that. I just delve in and just get in my feelings. Yeah. Because that just exists all my words. Um, Don't worry. But yeah, thank you for having me. This has been sick. Also really good to, but I'm like, this is such a weird place to meet. Yeah. Uh, and we were very much like, let's just jump on. Um, <laughs> literally. Um, so, so good to meet you also. Yeah. Because Keep up, keep up. I see you. I, see I don't you. like, I don't like to read, but I be reading them, the, them stories. You know, I be seeing you. So, I come see on. You. The love is mutual. You already know this. I've yeah. been following. I've been a stan. <laughs> I've been standing. I've been standing. Okay, and then you can teach right. me Paul someday. Oh, 100%. I literally have a poll as well. So when you're back in London, like, yes. I've got a poll in the garden. Me and Let's you go. can get out in my grandma's house. Literally. She would love it. <laughs> she would be living for it. Oh. Because... <laughs> but it's just cold, oh. man. But yeah. let me sign up to that Patreon. Let me get my Vogue classes in because I, I just be watching the YouTube videos screaming my head off. And I'm like, it's, it is time for me. It is time for me to try. It's time. It's so time I'll be for there. Me. I hope everyone else watching is going to be there too because, woo! Listen. Yeah, thank you for everyone for watching. Let me know uh, I would have even have anybody watching me talk. <laughs> the girls love you. Thank All you. right, my love. Enjoy thank your you. evening. And thank you for chatting with me. It's thank been you. a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.